America's military is the greatest in the world. We have guns on top of our guns. But is woke ideology tearing it apart from the inside? Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. What's more dangerous, the enemy without or the enemy within? At a time when China threatens to wage war with the United States, the U.S. military is potentially under a threat from something much more sinister, diversity, equity, and inclusion, or DEI, which some see as the biggest threat to our military. I've talked about DEI in previous episodes, but just as a recap, DEI encourages organizations to hire different kinds of people, especially those from so-called historically marginalized groups. It also seeks to ensure equality of outcome and give a sense of belonging. In theory, DEI involves creating a place where everyone is welcome, supported, and has the resources they need to grow and thrive regardless of identity, origin, or difference in circumstances. So what's so bad about that? Well, DEI shares a lot of the same presuppositions as critical theory, read Marxism, and promotes awareness of things like unconscious bias, discrimination, and microaggressions, such as misgendering. That ship ain't a she, it's a she. You can see the XE right there. DEI is especially concerned about systemic racism and sexism, which it says prevents non-white minorities and women from getting into positions of power on their own. That's why one of the hallmarks of DEI is affirmative action. Critics of DEI cheered earlier this summer when the U.S. Supreme Court ruled against affirmative action, saying that colleges and universities must use colorblind criteria in admissions, not race-based preferences. However, the Supreme Court left a head-scratching exemption for military academies. Why would it make an exception for the military? Well, in a footnote, the Supreme Court said that military academies weren't involved in the case challenging affirmative action, and that there were potentially distinct interests that military academies may present. The Supreme Court didn't elaborate on what those distinct interests were. But a friend of the court brief filed by 35 former military leaders argued that affirmative action in military higher education was essential for national security. According to them, History has shown that placing a diverse armed forces under the command of homogenous leadership is a recipe for internal resentment, discord, and violence. By contrast, units that are diverse across all levels are more cohesive, collaborative, and effective. The brief goes on to argue how race-conscious admissions, especially for the officer corps, are indispensable for the U.S. military. The assumption being that if the admissions are not race conscious, there won't be a big enough pool of eligible and qualified minority officer candidates. Should I be wondering how this guy got into officer school? But affirmative action is just the tip of the iceberg. I'll tell you more after the break. Welcome back. A number of military officers argue that affirmative action in military academies is necessary for national security. And this isn't new. In many ways, the U.S. military pursued DEI policies long before DEI really became a thing. For example, it has defended using race-based admissions for decades. But the U.S. military is making a more conscious effort to press DEI since it became popular in the wake of George Floyd's death. The armed forces have established DEI offices all over the place. And with them came various diversity programs. By the way, all of these require DEI positions that get paid quite the pretty penny. Things have especially ramped up under the Biden administration, which promotes DEI. Military academies have pushed plans to develop and maintain a comprehensive cultural awareness and bias literacy training framework, and review processes for influence of bias and unintended disadvantages to underrepresented populations. Remember, the argument is that doing this helps the military get stronger. Senior military officials are inclined to be on the DEI bandwagon under the Biden administration in much the same way as officials were inclined to promote female participation in the military under the Obama administration, even if it meant throwing shade at studies showing that all-male squads performed better. Proponents argue that DEI training prepares young officers to thrive in a diverse military, prevents groupthink, and encourages innovation. In fact, Proponents claim that DEI training is the solution for sexual harassment, harmful stereotyping, and radical extremism. Except for right after January 6, when the Pentagon stopped everything to root out far-right extremism in the ranks. Which included going after people who listened to Joe Rogan. But a lot of people don't agree this makes the military stronger. They say it makes the military weaker. 
There's been a lot of backlash against DEI in the military, especially among Republicans and conservatives who accuse the military of going woke. They're pushing back against the wokeness by banning military DEI initiatives, which has led many on the left to accuse Republicans of being hardliners who want to restrict the rights of women and transgender people and downplay problems of racism in the military. But the thing is, critics of DEI aren't necessarily opposed to cultural awareness, a diverse force, or soldiers treating each other with respect. They're concerned with how DEI is pushing racial and sexual politics in an apolitical organization like the U.S. military, and in doing so, threatens meritocracy and dilutes military readiness. They also see it as very distracting from what really matters, especially when things like critical theory and queer theory show up in military PowerPoint slides. How would that help in a war against China? Many in the military agree with this criticism, but senior military officials are fighting back, arguing that DEI helps bring in the best and brightest and that it only makes up a fraction of soldiers' training. But at the same time, it seems as though they're doing all they can to downplay their DEI initiatives. For example, U.S. military academies have repeatedly ignored Freedom of Information Act requests about their curriculum. Only after Judicial Watch filed a lawsuit did the Air Force Academy produce documents related to talks about critical race theory. But even then, it was still secretive. After Air Force Academy cadets exposed how they were taught things like inclusive gender-neutral language, the Air Force Academy marked some of its DEI materials as controlled, unclassified information, making it a punishable offense for cadets to publicly share them. Which sounds like they're doing something they know they shouldn't be doing. But the Academy said they did this because of something having to do with private student record information. But they later admitted to the Senate Armed Services Committee that there were no legitimate student records that justified classifying the documents. So what has been the actual impact of DEI in the military? I'll tell you after the break. Welcome back. Senior military officials argue that DEI is good for the military, but when it comes to sharing their DEI training materials, they're often less than enthusiastic. Criticism of it by active duty personnel is heavily punished. Many feel the U.S. military's DEI initiatives violate the U.S. Constitution, promotes disunity, and compromises competency by perpetuating victimhood and villainizing white heterosexual men. And there are plenty of examples of the DEI trainings looking askance at white heterosexual men. Examples include slides singling out white privilege, saying that in order to understand racial inequality and slavery, it is first necessary to address whiteness. There's also the promotion of the book How to Be an Anti-Racist, which promotes racism as the solution to racism, as well as a lecture called Understanding Whiteness and White Rage. It especially doesn't help that the chief DEI officer at the Department of Defense Education Activity has a history of making angry comments against white people, saying, I'm so exhausted at these white folk, saying black people can be racist too. It was only when news of that came out that the Defense Department launched a review. One thing that senior U.S. military leadership has to acknowledge is that many in the military community aren't big fans of DEI, or anything woke for that matter. A group of alumni of the Virginia Military Institute, the nation's oldest state support military college, have criticized the school's DEI and called for the rejection of the woke assault. They argue that DEI sows division, destruction, and discord, and is designed to cow Americans into agreeing with the fundamental premise that white people are inherently and irredeemably racist. It's not just them. Many other veterans and military families are majorly turned off by what they see as the military going woke. Enough that STARS, a group of veterans working against DEI initiatives, was able to collect 93 pages worth of quotes from military personnel who quit, wanted to quit, or were discouraging their children from joining because of it. That's why many fear that wokeism is hurting U.S. military recruitment, especially since people in military families are the biggest source of recruitment and tend to be conservative. As a matter of fact, in a 2022 Reagan National Defense Survey, over half of respondents were worried about military leadership becoming overly politicized and woke policies undermining military effectiveness. 
And in a poll funded by the Heritage Foundation earlier this year, those who were concerned about politicization cited an overemphasis on DEI programs as one of the top areas of concern. Some say criticisms against DEI is overblown, but here's something worth considering. Is DEI's fixation on identities, feelings, and the makeup of individuals really compatible with how militaries are supposed to operate? The leaked Air Force Academy presentation asks cadets to finish prompt likes, what I think about me in terms of who I am, what others think about me, what might be misunderstood about me, and how squad slash classmates can help me feel valued. But this is the exact opposite of the way militaries are supposed to function. There is no I and me in that kind of setting. By its nature, militaries are supposed to strip away individuality. Boot camp doesn't just test fitness, it's designed to intentionally break down individuality and demand both teamwork and subordination. At the end of the day, each recruit is just one of many who serve the nation. The U.S. military already does what DEI claims to do. Make soldiers come together under one flag to serve a common purpose and utilize knowledge about culture and language to win wars. But many believe that DEI is doing the exact opposite, especially when there's talk of oppression by people of a certain race and gender. Many are especially afraid that the U.S. military's willingness to lower standards to gain more recruits is partially motivated by the desire for more diversity. But nothing says low standards like assuming that minorities can't succeed on their own. And just like the U.S. military, American Cover needs diverse new recruits who can support the channel through voluntary contributions on Patreon. Think you're fit enough to join? Let me see you do some finger push-ups on the mouse pad by clicking on the orange button right here, soldier. And if you want to go into more depth about why DEI in the civilian sector is dying, click on this video. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.